Oregon Sasquatch steps from the riverside of a bridge into the headlights of their car. The Bigfoot was huge. I was scared. His eyes glowed like a cat's in the headlight of our car. Cambria writes RMSO. Unfortunately, this isn't a recent sighting, but like I said, it forever changed how I feel about the Bigfoot issue. I know that they are among us in the mountains. This sighting happened in the winter of 1992. I was traveling from Mount Shasta to Portland, Oregon, and we decided to take the way back I-5 to, I believe, Highway 97 to Highway 58. We had just passed the Willamette Ski Resort and had to pass a small bridge over the first creek or small river after the resort. I was sitting in the driver's side as it was my turn to drive, and it was just after the sun went down in the mountains. My daughter and husband at the time were dozing. The Bigfoot was standing on the right side of the road, and it looked as though it had come from the creek or small river. I can't remember what the name of it was, but it was the first bridge over the water after the Willamette Resort. As I could see it perfectly step up from the side of the bridge and then stand up to full height. At first, my brain registered it was a brown bear, but as it stood up to full height, my brain panicked. I immediately registered it as a Bigfoot. His eyes also glowed the moment it stood up, with its face in the light of my headlights, like a cat's eyes glow. Nothing came to mind other than, that's a Bigfoot. It was perfect, it was huge, and I was scared. I increased my speed and never looked back. Years earlier, my grandfather had built a house at the base of Mount Shasta, up from town. He took in a scared camper one night. The camper came knocking on the door in the middle of the night in a terrible fright. He told my grandfather that a Bigfoot had terrorized his camp and followed him to my grandfather's house. He asked for refuge for the night, which my grandfather gave him. I trust that my grandfather had told me the truth about the story, but thought the camper had imagined a Bigfoot instead of a large animal. Thus, I was a fence-sitter. After my own sighting, though, I feel the man was telling my grandfather the truth. The Bigfoot I saw was brown, definitely brown. I didn't notice any variation of color except for the face. It was lighter color. The eyes were large in the dark, and the glow of the light, I am sure, made them look bigger than they actually were. The details of the rest of the face are a blur after all these years, but the eyes have always stayed with me. I am five foot, and he was the largest humanoid animal I'd ever seen. It put me in immediate panic to see something so large that my car was passing so close to. When I say that it changed the way I think about things, I mean it. Now anything is possible. Bigfoot captured on camera near Seaside, Oregon. Sasquatch caught on camera crossing a gravel road before disappearing in the forest. Veteran researcher and Bigfoot witness Todd Nice posted the following image on Facebook he received from a witness stating, you never know where you will find information on Bigfoot. He was having a conversation with a DMV clerk, and she told him a friend of hers got a picture of Bigfoot near Seaside, Oregon on September 8th of 2014. She emailed him this photo. Todd gives his opinion on the image. Although the photo isn't very clear, I believe it to be genuine. Apparently, the creature crossed the gravel road from right to left, and they were only able to get one photo before it headed into the forest. Ironically, this is only five miles from where Todd had a sighting in 1993. My RMSO opinion. There are a couple of things I really like about this photo. The side profile is what I would expect with the forward lean, and I really like the fact that the photo was snapped at a perfect moment to capture the big foot with the rear leg cocked back around 75 degrees, something that humans do not do naturally when running or walking. Thinker Thunker educated the Bigfoot community on the 73 degree shin rise gait of Bigfoot in the Patterson video compared to a human shin rise of just 52% on average. In his video titled 21 Degrees Between Bigfoot and You, I also like the fact that this photo was not being publicized by the person that took it, showing they did not take this photo for personal attention or monetary gain. This woman got into a random conversation with the Bigfoot enthusiast and then offered up the photo and the story behind it. Another thing that I like about this image is look how well this creature blends or melts into the environment. No wonder they are rarely seen, and when they are, as in this circumstance, they disappear quickly 
separating themselves from a perceived danger of a human encounter. Many truckers have had similar Bigfoot encounters in the same valley. Christmas Valley trucker eye to eye with 10 foot tall Sasquatch. William H. writes RMSO. One time during the 90s, I was going to Christmas Valley about 70 miles east of Portland, Oregon. There is a way station for trucks before the exit to the Cascade Locks. I was talking to a weightmaster who called me to the station building. He was bored. I told him where I was going and he said to get off the next exit and go south on the big hill. I was only going 20 miles per hour on packed snow, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw something moving on the side of the road. This Bigfoot stopped right on the road in front of me. It was very tall, as I was eye to eye in an International Eagle truck. Ten feet off the road, it looked right into my truck and took off down the hill. When I finally got to the bottom, there was a truck stop called Wild Bills. I went in and sat down in the restaurant. The waitress came over and asked if I saw a ghost. I said, no, but you wouldn't believe me if I told you. She said, try me. So I told her. She said everybody driving up there sees it. RMSO asks, amazing. Do you have any details of the description of the creature, color? What was the face and eyes like? Thanks for sharing your encounter. William continues, it was at least 10 feet tall. I was driving a cab over tractor truck that was very high truck. Sitting in the driver's seat, I was eight to nine feet off the ground. Look at the first remake of the Planet of the Apes. The good ape, this is a dead ringer. I had an experience in Wyoming. I've been a trucker for 12 years now. Back to Wyoming, I was going from Toledo, Ohio to Alberta, Canada. The interstate was just finished on Highway 84. Nothing as in the way of fuel stops, food, or anything like that. It was desolate. It was winter and real cold. Well, as my luck goes, my air buzzer for low air pressure brakes went off. Just before I left two days ago, the mechanic said he changed the water filter for the air system. Well, that's not true. Now I'm stopped on the side of the road. I got my coveralls on and grab a fuse to heat the air line up. I'm laying on the side of the road, heating the air line up to melt ice inside the lines with a flare that's bright enough to see from space. <laughs> All of a sudden, I hear footsteps in the crunchy snow. It was definitely on two legs. It was then the ice melted and the buzzer went off. I was in the truck and in my coveralls, but that's okay. I was getting out of there. I know what I heard. I hope you guys enjoy these uh, Bigfoot sightings and counters. One of them, the witness, got a photo of what they saw crossing the road in Seaside, Oregon amazing Bigfoot encounters. Keep on watching. We're going to keep on squatching.